and the usual breakout then for, for live for the MDM. And I've already written word about stay here. So we get underway with the head coach Joshua the team for the weekend. Uh, the team to play against Italy on Saturday is uh, Jack McGrath, Rory Best, hooker and captain, uh, Tyke Furlong, Ian Henderson, Dev Toner, Peter O'Mahony, Dan Levy and Jack Conan at number eight. Um, at nine, Conor Murray, Jonathan Sexton at ten, Jacob Stockdale, Bundy Aki and Robbie Henshaw in the midfield, <coughs> Keith Earls and Rob Carney. And on the bench is uh, Sean Cronin, Ken Healy, um, Andrew Porter, Quinn Roo, and uh, CJ Stander, Kieran Marmion at, um, in the backs, and Joey Carberry and Jordan Lama. Joe, in relation to the changes, particularly the starting changes, what is the thinking there? Um, s some of it is, is mileage. I think CJ Stander had 42 cleanouts and 23 carries in the game in, in Paris, which, while not attritional for CJ, uh, he, he's in great shape. It, it's really probably rewarding some performances by Jack Conan in, in, in recent times as well, and it's also that opportunity to to try to keep a freshness. These Six Nations games, they uh, they do become if nothing else, mentally attritional. By the time we got back from uh, Paris on uh, Sunday evening, it, uh, you know, he had some fairly t sore, tired bodies, and it's just a an opportunity to freshen the side up a little bit. What's impressed most about Jack? I think Jack, what's visible with Jack is his ability to accelerate and carry the ball, but I, I think on the other side of the ball, he's been really impressive. He's been bringing a, a, a really physical side to his uh, defence. Obviously, his ability to transfer the ball through the contact, before the contact, is, is another impressive thing. Um, his line-out work has been continually improving as well. So, so I, I suppose there's a whole gambit of things that he can bring to the party. And uh, uh, for those who, who remember the, the tour in the summer, I think Jack was a really impressive performer for us. He, he did well in the, uh, in, in the Autumn Internationals in the windows that he got. And, and so this is a, another opportunity for him. Very disappointing news, obviously, for uh, Josh, season-ending injury. But Dan came in and did extremely well. Are you happy with the balance of your back row and Dan in particular? Yeah, I, I think Dan, visibly, he, he got straight into the game. He carried strongly. He got off the line and defended strongly. Uh, he took a super kickoff. It was a little bit short of the 10 metres, but, you know, when... When those sorts of things happen, you just want players to be decisive and, and just grab the game by the scruff of the neck, and, and we think Dan did that. Uh, we felt that Josh had, had done really well prior to that, um, so it, it was really disappointing for Josh, um, you know, just toward the end of that first half to, to, to suffer the injury that he did. Um, the balance part of the question, I think with Pete Omani, his leadership experience there, I think with the two younger lads, um, that they'll bring their enthusiasm, athleticism and, and real hunger. Uh, you know, we, we hope that it is pretty well balanced. We've seen some pretty impressive performances some, from some of their back row. Uh, Negre was, uh, was really impressive, I thought, last week a, as a newcomer and then that's balanced up by the experience they have with, with uh, you know, the, the legend that is Sergio Parisi. Yeah, you know, you, you, you're just delighted that you got out of there with the points and, you know, it wouldn't be too many years ago that anyone in Paris was acceptable. Uh, now it's, it's examined a little bit more thoroughly and more closely and it's not, no different from what we, we do as well. We felt that we stayed in control of that match for a, a long time and to let Teddy Toma despite knowing how, how lethal a finisher he can be, to let him slip up the touchline and slip away through us was incredibly uh, frustrating and disappointing. Um, and I think in a, in a test match of that magnitude, it only takes one lapse 
for a team to get back into the game or get in front in a game and we want to make sure that those lapses aren't repeated. We want to stay in control of games and it's hard work to stay in control of a, of a, a team when you're playing in Paris. They had so much to play for. Um, you know, reading a lot of the French media leading up to that game and, and reading it post that game, they were talking about a new beginning. They were talking about putting a stamp on things um, and, and a real collective that they felt they were building. So, you know, we knew we weren't going to get anything lightly. Yes, there are things we need to be better at. Um, and I think some of our... Some of our platforms didn't quite provide what we were looking for. Uh, you know, you, you look at the first one, 43 seconds in, we, we get a dream platform and we're away and playing. Um, you know, I, I think uh, five minutes, 56 into the game, Johnny's putting the ball into the corner. We're 3-0 up. It's, it's exactly what we're looking to do in Paris. And those building blocks, uh, I felt, allowed us to control a lot of the game. But... Um, You've got to be better than that. You've, you don't just want control, you want to be able to dominate and you dominate by building scoreboard pressure and you know, there's a few things we'd look back at and, and feel that we didn't quite nail opportunities that we, that we should have. Um, having said that, opportunities were, you had to work very, very hard for them. You, know, you work solidly for five minutes and you still only get a three point shot at them. Um, but, but that was enough, thankfully, at the end. No, I, I was quite excited by how we broke them right in the first minute when they'd be at their most motivated. How we uh, could turn them around inside the, those those early parts of the game. Um, we were frustrated by some of how the the attack was blunted, and and um, you know I, I think we have to work harder at making that ball quick, and 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 we'll hopefully get a bit more of a hand. Um, you know, because th th there was a lot of uh, a lot of traffic in the breakdowns that that should have been cleaned up. So you know, you've got to be good enough to do that yourself, and then um, hopefully we can we can give that platform to Connor and, and guys can play on the back of that. Um, but to force them in on their home turf to make 245 tackles uh, is is not a bad is not a bad effort when you want to try to stay in control of a game. So will Josh need uh, surgery on his uh, on his injury? Look, that that's information that um, that we won't uh, we won't be forthcoming with it at the at the present because at this stage there is no surgery and um, we're gonna, we're going to just uh, probably park Josh at the moment, let him. Um, get comfortable with uh, with the injury as it is, and then the, the, the people who, who have a good idea about what should be done next will make those decisions. John, or is this the back from um, Jordan Lamour if he gets a chance to come on? Um, I, I expect Jordan to, to provide what he's been providing that we've all seen in provincial matches, uh, that electric acceleration, that change of direction, but also that surety under the high ball, that skill, um, you know, there's a couple of really nice passes that he's linked in with to, to set players away. So, you know, we'd, we'd love to see all that. Um, and uh, away from the ball, he's got a, a, a super work rate, Jordan. So, you know, we know that if, uh, if we are coming under pressure, he, he'll be working really hard to help relieve that pressure. Is it the ideal situation to have him on the bench with the experience of Rob starting and you not having to pitch him in too soon? Yeah, yeah, it's always a mix, you know. There's never a perfect situation, um, but there there are certainly better situations. And if if he replaces Keith or, or Jacob on on the edges, then having Rob at the back will be an asset. If he replaces uh, Rob, then having Keith, particularly with his experience um, on the edge, I, I think that will be an asset for him as well. So. That, you know, that's part of what you do when you're trying to place a, a, a player. But you, know, you, you don't place a player and, and expect him to be looked after. He, he, he has an expectation himself, Jordan, that he's going to look after what he needs to do and, and ho hopefully bring those exciting elements that I mentioned to, to the game. We took the last couple, Joe, was it 
tempting to maybe start Joey Carberry at 10, and if so, what was the difference? What, what was Colin made to go with Johnny Sexton? I think um, again, it's combinations. One of the one of the great things about the Six Nations at the moment, and and I hope in the future, is that it's played over seven weeks. So you know, if Johnny didn't start this week and didn't play next weekend, which he's unlikely to do, then uh, he'd have two weekends where he hadn't played. Is that the best preparation for our next game as well? That's the thing that you're always balancing. Um, for, for Joey, he, he may well come off the bench this week and he, he potentially could play for Leinster next week, um, all, all things being equal, and he would still get that, uh, that exposure at potentially 10, um, but, but even getting some rugby would, would be fantastic uh, for Joey. Because he, he had that period out, he's only really just back playing and so we also want to be able to manage his entry back into the team. With regards to breakdown, regards to breakdown last week, maybe the ball was a bit slow coming out. I know that listening to some of the reaction from during the week, there was some comment on the referee that maybe it could have been a bit clearer. Would you like to be a bit clearer this week, or do you think you have to take responsibility on yourselves? Um, you can't control what the, what the referee is going to decide. You know, and we had one of the best referees in the world. Uh, it, it's still a difficult place to go and clean big men off the ball. So, you know, I, I don't think the Italians are going to try to make anything easy for us as well. Um, Roman is, is, as a rule, he, he, he likes to see people move quickly. And so, you know, that, that will potentially help both sides. Um, that will make it more difficult for us to defend and, and it, it will potentially add a little bit of opportunity attack-wise. Connor, the feeling among the players coming out of Paris, the victory in the manner you did, is there a real sense that that could be a, a seminal moment in this season for you um, Yeah, hopefully. You'd, ho you'd hope that. I think we, as a squad, and we've mentioned before, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, to win games, perform. Um, and as Joe touched on, we felt in control of that game for, for a long period of time. And, um, you know, that slip up for Teddy Thomas, try, unbelievable finish, but... We looked at that defensively and we were quite disappointed. Um, and then to kind of regather ourselves under the post, next job focus and then go and, and you know, build the phases, 41 phases for that drop goal, I think will um, only strengthen us in the future. And I think you know, the, the mood in camp is, is completely different than what I, I thought it would have been if, if we didn't get that drop goal. And you know, thankfully, we, we got there, we got the result and you know, it's, it's a step forward in, in the right direction for us. Okay, yeah, guys. Good news. Oh, sorry, just about Jared Payne. Keep moving. Jared Payne with Ulster doing a bit of coaching for him. Is that good news for you? Happy to happy to hear about that. Yeah, again, uh, Jared might not be finished uh, playing the game yet, so we'll. we'll I, I've had discussions with Jared. They're ongoing, and um, we'll we'll continue to have those discussions. And uh, you know, he's in great shape. Uh, so you know, I I wouldn't rule them out, um, but. He's he's got a real understanding of the game, so to to have him involved in coaching and to have that experience that he he brought to uh, to our team, uh, I think uh, you only have to ask the players to know how comfortable he made other players feel because he understood the game, and that's got to be good. Okay, guys, we're gonna switch this down over to embargo written words. Connor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.